Hey, what's going on YouTube? I want to tell y'all one of the reasons why I love New Hampshire. I just came from a fundraiser for the local sheriff uh, here and he's you know running for re-election. So I go into the place and the first thing that I see is that they uh, burned a YouTube video to disc and they were playing this uh, this mit this disc for an audience and I'm not gonna tell you what movie it was but let's just say it was it's from a, a, a major uh, persona on, uh, on in our circles you know you all know what I'm talking about but uh, you know, where else do you find that because you certainly don't find that uh, you know back in New York where I'm, where I'm from you would never see anything like that and I'm gonna post here a couple of clips. I'll try and keep it short. Um, just to hear what this guy is saying and to to hear and to see for your own eyes that you know what? There are some uh, law enforcement people, uh, sheriffs in particular, that actually do get it. There are a few of them. There are a handful of them. And you know, I would uh, suggest that anybody that happens to be in the area Carroll County area of New Hampshire, uh, hopefully you would consider uh, voting for this guy and uh, getting him another round in office. So, and, and even if you're not from New Hampshire and you have no uh, stake in this at all, whatever, you might just want to listen to a few minutes and uh, hear what this guy has to say. All right, hope you're doing well. Later, you too. This is a standard. This this is the right thing to do. Let's do it. And it started three years ago. And all I've asked, if anybody has any issue, I'll try my best to give it for you a full and detailed explanation. Uh, but this thing that started in Conway, the newspapers and the marshals and all that, I sat down. I you know gave an explanation. But you pick up the paper and it looks you know. It's, it, it almost sounds like they have me helping a fugitive out the back door. It's weird. Yeah, and you know, get in the car. Right? But anyway, I'm working on it. I, I sat down with them and said, hey, this is another point of view. And the thing that I see in government is, from so many people, it's about getting along. You know, you've got to get along with this. Don't offend this one. You know, we answer. It's very clear to me. <laughs> And maybe I have the luxury because I'm actually retired and I don't play to it, but we're obligated to the people. I can't worry about I can't worry about what this police chief or this administrator or this selectman says. This is a situation, this is what I did, and this is my account. Period. But anyway, we're working on it. I've seen tremendous progress in all sorts of areas. Tremendous progress. It's tough, and it's tough to measure, but it's incremental improvement every day. How did I get interested in this mortgage fraud thing? Well, I got educated. You know, I started getting information from an organization called Mortgage Endgame, and it dawned on me, I don't know anything about this. This is, you know, people being affected. And then, simultaneously, we had several cases back to back, people being approached or trying to be foreclosed on that had no business being approached or foreclosed on. And the other thing that I found is that if, if somebody's in a foreclosure incident, they're villainized. You know, they're a bad person, they're a deadbeat, they're the person that, that why this whole situation is like, that's how they define it. Plays right into. It. Now, just, as far as your other uh, concern, how, you know, how, how does a small sheriff, a small county, without enough deputies, and certainly with, you know, officers that, that really don't know much about this, uh, get involved? I don't know how we get involved, but I do know that people at all levels of the system, the most they know about is a small segment of the system. Nobody has very good visibility on the whole. So I think if people come to me, uh, like that guy did, he called and said, I have to turn my keys into a railroad. Uh, you, you know, and he, 
He explained too, he says, yeah, I, I was in arrears, but I had 3,000 to pay out and they want to take my money and they sent it back. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Well, to me, he's a victim. And the guy's not isolated. Most people suffer in silence and all this stuff. And a lot of times they're elderly, uh, they can't read very well, so they're not equipped to deal with this stuff. They have to have somebody to turn to that, that at least is going to hear their issue. Say, you know, if I call this guy, he, you know, he, he'll at least listen. Boy, he'll get you in touch uh, with the right people. I hope that answers your questions. Uh, but it, I found this really, really interesting. The sheriff's office is the oldest office in English common law. It dates back to the late 1200s, early 1300s. And in England, where we get our legal tradition from, the sheriff was really called a shire reeve, and he was the king's man, or the man of the, the sovereign's man. And he would sometimes hold court and collect taxes. He maintained law and order in, in the shires. Well, he did it on behalf of the sovereign, who was the king. Well, when we transferred to the United States, and the people became sovereign, the sheriff became the people's man, the new sovereign, still the sovereign's man, same concept, okay? And what's interesting is, is the sheriff throughout the country is the highest elected, is the only elected law enforcement office that we've got. So he stands, his office stands, as a protector of the people, and fraud, in the case of you know, this issue with mortgages, is what's called a tort. It's a criminal law, it's a criminal thing. And it's actually, in most cases, there's no statute of limitation, like murder. And so the, it's proper for the sheriff and the protection of the, of the county's residents to be looking into any situation where there's a potential of a crime being perpetrated against the people, which would be fraud. So he's looking into that, and because we're a non-judicial state, in a judicial state, uh, in other places, the sheriffs are given an opportunity to intervene in, in an inappropriate process or procedure because they actually stand up on the courthouse steps and auction off people's properties. They can look at the procedure, the paperwork, and make sure it's all in order. It's a different procedure in many of the states like ours. So there's more need, if you will, for a careful intervention on behalf of the sovereigns, us, and a very careful protection of those jurisdictions between federal, state, municipal authorities that are paid to by, by the rules of those municipalities. They're not hired by us to do that. They're secondary agents in a sense. So there's something really special about counties, and in the uh, People's Republic of California, they've done all they can to get rid of the counties and the county sheriff, the county organizations, because they stand in the way of the great state out there. You'll find that in several other states in the union as well. So protecting the county is really important. Good point. Thoughts, it's a general question. What are your thoughts on the Constitution? Well, I'm a constitutional chair. I had a reporter ask me. Let me move over a little bit. I'm getting the clear. There we go. And I, I had a reporter ask me, what does that mean to you? And I, uh, my initial thought was, well, it doesn't matter what it means to me. When you say you up, swore to uphold the Constitution, that's exactly what it is. So being a constitutional sheriff, is, uh, as I have in any police officer, takes an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of New Hampshire. Uh, so help me God. So that is the key to being a constitutional sheriff. Well, that's a great answer. And do you think that, uh, like a lot of other sheriffs, do, don't hold that same value? I don't know. I'm, I'm part of an organization that's fairly new. It's called the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association. Uh, I'm a member of the board of directors of it. It was founded by a sheriff named Richard Mack. He was, he was kind of a celebrated constitutional sheriff. Is that, is that the sheriff out of Texas? Is it? Yeah, he was out of uh, Texas or Arizona. He ran for Arizona. Uh, good guy, and it's all about being a nonpartisan office. I mean, the sheriff, I mean, we know what our job is. Yeah. And some people seem to do it better than others, and some people hey Joe, I'll see you aren't quite so sure. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm right now, absolutely uh, sure who I am. That and they, yeah. That's the electorate, that's the citizens. Mm -hmm. So I could probably go on and on with you on that, but that's, uh, you know, that, that's the abbreviated answer. Great.